Hi, Jason Niemeyer here with another tutorial on product photography. What we're going to do is we're going to clip this image and we're going to remove the cluttered background. This would be uh, very helpful for posting images on eBay or any ad where you want to draw attention to the back or the item, the object, and not the cluttered background. This particular image, just a pop can, taken with a fairly nice digital camera, nice lighting, and it's fairly sharp focus, and that's exactly what you want. Um, just put a good flash on it and, and shoot the object. This, at the end result here is we're going to make it look like it was actually taken in a far more sophisticated method with a with a nice life, light box tint, bright white background, a little, little bit of a shadow and, and a nice reflection. So let's get started. Now I've already gone ahead and sped up and done the top and the bottom, more complex curves and stuff uh, already, as you can see. Now I'm going to show you how we did that. Right now we're going to come up and grab the polygonal lasso tool, which is this tool up here. Click on that. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. I've got a Wacom tablet, so it's really easy for me to pan around, but you might want to use this navigator icon over here. Once you're zoomed in, you just put that red square right on the area where you want to start your work. And you can navigate around in there fairly quickly with a mouse. Now grab this little tail on the end of this tool. You see the little tail on the bottom there is where you want to start your line. And just click right on the edge of the can there. And then come down. It's a nice little straight line. Right down where we left off before. And you want to do this in sections because this tool does tend to hiccup a little bit. You don't want to get all the way done with a project and have to start all over. So if you just do it in sections like I'm doing here, and we get back up to the top of that other line, you notice that little circle that appears on that polygonal tool? That lets you know that you're at the end of the line, and you just click on it, and it makes a nice little marquee there. And we're going to fill that in with white. We're going to grab the white. Okay. We're going to grab the brush. We're going to get ourselves a nice, good size, solid brush. And we're just going to turn up the size so we can get all of the area we want to get and we want to turn up the opacity all the way to 100 percent so we can fill in that area with white pretty simple now again I'm I'm panning with my with my Wacom pen you'd be coming up here and moving this down with your mouse pretty simple then when you've got that filled come up here and hit select deselect and then pan over to the other side of the can so we can get that other side done come back up to the top where we left off grab that polygonal tool click right there where the edge is and then come down right in there along that edge real nice come back up remember the little circle when you see that little circle you know you're at the end of that line And you see there it went and hiccuped on me, so we got to do it again. This is why you want to do this in steps, stages. Take your time because this thing has a tendency to want to have a mind of its own. You don't want to get all the way halfway through a project and then that thing messes up on you. So just take your time and do it in stages. Now you could actually just use a white brush if you had a Wacom tablet or something. To give you more control and just go right up against the can. <laughs> but this this gives you a little bit better control. Okay, go ahead and hit deselect again. Zoom out on the can now. Now you'll notice at this time we have white all the way around our can. And that's what we want. So we're going to go back in, we're going to get that brush again. We're going to keep the size fairly big, but you want to be careful now. We're going to go ahead and start removing the entire background. You don't want to bump the can because the can is not protected and if you bump the can You'll just have to, and I'll show you an example. If you bump the can just like that, come back in here over to your histories tab and bump back up one, and that goes back to where it was before. It's kind of like an edit undo. You only have so many of those, though. You don't want to get too carried away. So when you're doing this, you take your finger off your mouse button every so often. Don't just hold it down and do it because you, if you screw up, you have to go back. You don't want to have to go back and do the whole thing. So if you take your finger off the mouse button every so often, you can only go back just just that one little bit maybe where you where you messed up like that. Oops, did that one little bit. There you go. You can go back and you can fix that. See, now we're done. 
we've got all the background removed. And what's cool now is we can do so many different things once we do this. Here's what's neat. We can come up here and grab this magic wand tool and we can click on this. And you notice that we have this marquee border all the way around the outside edge and all the way around the can. That's kind of masked off that can so we can paint now in this white area. Isn't that cool? Now if we come up here and hit select and hit inverse, we have actually inversed it. Well, now we're selecting just the can and we can actually make a copy of this, we'll remove it, cut it, paste it, we can do whatever we want to with it. But I'm going to go back to inverse, I'm going to select black, and I'm going to get myself a nice dithered style brush, fairly large, with a nice soft edge on it, and I'm going to make a shadow back here. We're going to turn the opacity down to about 15. We don't want a real big shadow. We just want to come out here nice and faint. A little bit darker, closer to the can. Look at that. That's what we want. That's what we're looking for. Just a nice hint of a shadow there. And a little bit wider back here. Look at that. That looks great. Okay, now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and inverse this. So we just have the can selected. Okay, come back up here and we're going to hit copy we're going to hit paste. Now what that has done is it's put another can right on top of our other can. Isn't that neat? And with that we're going to come back up here and we're going to hit edit again and we're going to hit transform and we're going to hit flip vertical. Now yes that did turn our can upside down. Isn't that neat? And what that does is it allows us to make a real cool reflection of the can. Just put the can right below the can the first one. Stay on that active layer and then turn the opacity down. Way down. Just so you can just see the hand of the can. Okay. Now come up and grab your eraser tool and get that brush fairly good sized. And turn the opacity down just a little bit. Yeah, down to about maybe 20. We don't want all of this can in here for that reflection. We want to just to give a kind of a hint of a reflection there. Like the can is sitting on a shiny white surface like a sheet of white plastic. They use that a lot in photography. Kind of an interesting effect. And we'll just go ahead and just kind of just slightly airbrush that just till we get that hint of that reflection in there. Now you notice that the reflection is still on top of the can. You see that in our image here? That reflection is still on, on the top of the can. I'm going to zoom out a little bit so you can see that. We don't, we don't want that right here either, so we're going to make our brush a little bit smaller, turn the opacity back up, and then we need a little bit bigger brush, and we're going to get rid of that off the can too. Look at there. Get rid of that. We don't want that on there no more. Get rid of all of it off the can. Now just back out. Now look at that. Doesn't that look great? Now what you want to do is get ready to pre prepare your ad, your picture for your ad, go ahead and put a nice marquee border around it so we can crop it. There it goes. We're going to go ahead and crop the image and you're done. I'll deselect it so you can see what it looks like. And that's it. That's all there is to it. That's how you make real nice looking product photography for your ads, whether it's an eBay, newspaper publication, or whatever. I uh, hope you enjoyed this. Now, of course, you don't have to settle for a white background. You can put any color in there you want, any kind of pastel color. You can paint that. Um, I hope you found the tutorial useful. Stay tuned. We'll give you some more in a very short time. Have a good one. We'll see you later. Bye-bye.